I think it's important for people to get married. The world is a very lonely place. You know, I've been married and now I'm widowed and I'd get married again. Uh, Mark, are you lonely? <clears throat> Good morning, matchmakers. Yeah. Uh, did you get my brochure? We have an all Jewish service, and what we try to do is find appropriate people for you. And I think appropriate is the key word here. I am up for adventure and fun. So I like bowling, eating, going out to eat. I like to eat. I love to have a good time. The first thing we do is have you come in and talk to me. And during that hour, um, I try to find out as much as I can about your specific needs and desires and wants and uh, the kind of lifestyle and the kind of um, uh, things that would best enhance your life. I won't scuba dive. My all-time favorite movie is Breakfast at Tiffany's. I can make a sailor blush. It's <laughs> nothing to brag about probably, but... People love to talk to me. I'm at a party and I hear someone's sex life. I think I'm a loving, giving, caring person. I overanalyze. That's my problem in the relationship. And then I get angry at people. Okay. That's my major flaw. After the interview, you have nothing to do except go home, make some phone calls that we will recommend for you, and take these ladies out for a cup of coffee. And each time you've met someone new, I want you to call me back and tell me uh, whether you accepted or rejected and you know, in either case, why? Would you like to make an appointment, Scott? $400 a year. 400 a year. Uh, did you faint? <laughs> I don't know what people expect. They have a feeling that if it costs $400, um, then they really should get Paul Newman, uh, you know, Robert Redford, or... Uh, Jacqueline Smith, you know, uh, after all this money should really do something special for them. I can't make them realize that it's not reality. And am I saying this nicely? Because hmm. I don't want I don't want anybody to feel put down. I don't want anyone to feel that um, I can't provide Robert Redford because I could. <laughs> He's just not available this week. <laughs> um, honest, um, stable, dependable, uh, real hardworking, I guess that, uh... Boring? For a year and a half in Houston, I was taking boxing lessons, which was great workout. Boxing? Yeah, it was really fun. Oh, I'd love to try that. It's really fun. Oh, wow. Oh, I like the canoe. Canoe. And what else? And I like fishing. Fishing. And I like biking a lot. And I like putting on my tuxedo and going to a black tie event and going out to a fine dinner. I have a horseback ride, I golf, I ski, I boat, I water ski, I sail, I everything. I drive cars fast, I, you know. Well, I like to run. That's run. about uh, okay. the only physical. Uh, Do you play tennis, golf, uh, no. racquetball, or swim, uh, hike? Walk, run, jog. Well, I got a TV set, and I got all I got about 150 different tapes with movies and all that stuff in the house, you know. I have a graduate degree, which is from Yale. I worked for a few years, and then I got a graduate degree in Yale, uh, in management from Yale. Intelligent. Yeah. Masculine. Person? I'm a huggy, touchy person. I'm down to earth. I have my mother's values. I, I think that's a good thing. How do you make a girl or a man see that, um, you know, the reality is this guy or girl that they're dating really likes them, is willing to put up with them, and, uh, and they should, you know, they should be so grateful. But if I tell this to a girl or to a guy, he says, you're asking me to settle? I'd like him taller than me, at least six feet, if possible. Nice body. Nice mind. <laughs> Oh, they have to not be on drugs. That's a major thing. I'm looking for a woman who probably is in her early 20s to early 30s. I think that range is about where I'd want to be dating people. Any age. Any age. Oh, wow. Good for you. Any age. Okay. 18 years old, 20 years old, 25 <laughs> years old. 
28 <laughs> years old, any age. In other yeah. words, I'm interested in a woman that looks like a woman in a bathing suit. They have to have a car. My ideal man is going to be my knight in shining armor and whisk me away and take care of me and pamper me and support my kids and me and okay. my family. They want everything. That's why. They want uh, exciting, marvelous, stable, financial. So I like a girl who like has a mind of her mm -hmm. own, but not uh, aggressive. Oh, they have to be very mushy and romantic and oh, yeah. want to celebrate anniversaries monthly. Right. I don't ask for much. You know, mm -hmm. as I said, I just want happiness. Mm -hmm. When you pay $400 for something, you want the best. You're paying for it. If you meet them in the bar, then you settle. But if you've given someone $400, you want good merchandise. So, Mark, if you were to come into my service and you gave me $400, what would you want for your money? Some kind of goddess. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> and goddesses are a little out of season. Carrying on a centuries-old tradition, Irene Nathan started her matchmaking service in Chicago 16 years ago to help Jewish singles meet other Jewish singles. The daughter of a rabbinical scholar, Irene was married for 40 years, and during that time, she was a wife, a mother, an interior designer, a real estate agent, and a social worker. Her husband, Normie, died in 1993, and her only son, Asher, is married and lives with his family in Israel. Besides being well known for matchmaking, she's active in the Orthodox Jewish community of Chicago, where she lectures at schools and senior citizens' homes. As a matchmaker, Irene has been responsible for over 200 marriages. Only four have ended in divorce. I think I'm, I'm serving a purpose. There's so many people who have no one, and. Um, if I can fill that need, if I can ease some of the pain, it's a wonderful experience. You like this type? Is that a pretty girl? Do you like that look? No, um, yes. She's, well, she's just doing a little too much that. makeup, but. You know. Who comes to me? Who comes to me? People who are not making it socially. And they've had failures. <clears throat> you know, they don't come to me at the height because they don't need me then. But you asked me how has the divorce affected me, one way feeling that I'm going to be alone, and I don't like feeling alone. I have to crawl into their lives. I have to uncover their, their secrets so you could talk about your problems. Yeah, but we never were able to work them out in the bedroom. <laughs> oh. I could just sit here and take statistics. How old are you? How tall are you? Where'd you go to school? But, um... That would never do for me. I have to butt in and I have to change people. Women like assertive men. Women like men who say, let's do it my way this time. Huh? Do you turn guys off because you're so judgmental? If I gave you no. a nice guy and he came to you in, in uh, polyester slacks, would that turn you off? Yeah. I want you to play hard to get. Okay. okay. It's very important to psych people out. It's very important to hear where they're at and what's in operation in their life. Someone whose dad wasn't a rabbi, God, that's a lot to... Okay, forget him. I got others. But he was okay. But you he scare so fun. easy. You know, you go out with a dope thing, but you won't go out with a dope thing. I know. You know, I know. You, you drive me crazy. I don't know. Am I wrong? Should I just take their money and give them a date and, you know, let them do their own thing? I can't do it. I, um, there's this thing in me that won't let me just send a guy out and go on his dates and, uh, you know, forget about him. Greg and Marissa are two people who have benefited from Irene's diligence. Their pairing is Irene's most recent success story and is living proof that romance can be arranged. You know, there was a stigma. I didn't want to, uh, oh, a dating service. What kind of loser was I, you know, that I had to go to a dating service? Big L on the forehead. Greg was the first date that they sent me. 
I was so unexcited to go on this date. I was driving back from Wisconsin when I called Marissa from my car phone. You know, I found out in retrospect that her reaction was, who does he think he is? Is he bragging? He's trying to show off that he has a car phone? I just felt kind of cynical about the whole dating prospect, and I, I just thought, well, I, it's something I have to do. It's like, it's like going on the Stairmaster. You don't just love it, you just do it. Five, six, seven, eight. Slow, slow. He said, do you have any preference for dinner? Would you like to have Chinese? And I said, well, I'm Jewish. Of course I'd like to have Chinese food. And then we walked together down the sidewalk, and I noticed that he walked like a duck. His feet turned out, and I thought that was really cute. Marissa got a fortune cookie that night that said that um, from this point on, her luck had changed. I knew that she was really special and that I couldn't wait to get to know her more. My girlfriend in New York, her parents have a big home here, and we were house-sitting it. It was great, you know, this nice big mansion, jacuzzi, the whole spiel. And we sat on the floor in front of the coffee table, and we were eating Chinese food, and there were these two fortune cookies wrapped in the shrink wrap, same fortune cookies you always get at restaurants. So I took one, and I opened it up, and it said, Marissa, I love you. Will you marry me? And I sort I think I started passing out because everything felt very surreal. Tears were streaming down her face, and she looked at me, and with the softest voice, she said, am I dreaming? And I said, no, you're not dreaming. Ta-da! I would like to think that it's destiny that I met Greg, but, um, you know, or that there's this greater power that brings people together and that love conquers all and that you'll find that right person at the last moment when you've just given up hope. But I, I don't think it's so much up to chance. I mean, I, I think you have to uh, make a decision about who you are and what you really want and be comfortable with that. Marriage is uh, good work if you can get it. I, I can't describe how happy we are. I mean, every day I wake up and no matter how hard things get at work and no matter how many things go wrong in the other aspects of my life, I can come home at the end of the day and get a hug and a kiss from the woman I love. And uh, it's indescribable. Everybody needs romance, don't they, Mark? And I wish it, I wish it for everyone, including you. I'm beginning to worry about you. You have to have a serious talk. You'll have to be more forthcoming with your truth. I'll have to know where you're at and where you're headed. And just maybe we'll be able to get you on the right road, get you off Lonesome Street and uh, into the arms of uh, a proper girl. Um, how does this look? Is she serious? <laughs> does she actually think I need her help meeting women? Would you like to grow behind the desk? Raise your little finger if you like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lady cute. behind the desk. Yes. <laughs> Are you married? Uh, no, I'm not. Would you like to be? Yes, I would. How old are you? 28. That's just right. Just right. What's your religious belief? Catholic. Catholic. You know, if I marry you off to a Jew, I go to purgatory. I have it on good advice that if I ever introduce you, any boy, to a Jew, and they get married. I've had it. So my advice is convert. <laughs> then you'll be a nice, a nice Jewish boy. Um, actually, you deserve a nice Jewish girl. Well, I am half Jewish. My father is Jewish, and my mother isn't. But according to Irene, that's not good enough. They did eventually divorce, which probably proved something or other. But here I am telling you about my life when I'm supposed to be making a movie about Irene and her matchmaking service. <clears throat> go, go over there, stir. I think she considers me one of her clients now. Mark, taste this, honey. See what, what it needs. Sure. It's your favorite broccoli soup. What does it mean? Um, I don't know. Garlic? <laughs> Garlic, hey. Looks good. That's a good idea. Let me get the garlic. You like it chunked or fine? Uh, whatever. So, Irene, tell me a little about your your family background, <clears throat> your father, your... I'd rather hear about you, Mark. You're the one that I'm interested in right now. 
Tell me about you, Mark. Well, I'm 39. I've never been married. And at the moment, I'm not going out with anybody. And I guess like, with, like a, lot, a lot of guys, I'm looking for the perfect woman. It's always been hard for a woman to live up to my standards of perfection because I grew up in Hollywood. My father was a cinematographer, so when I was a kid, I was surrounded by beautiful images. I was growing up in an industry that was telling us that perfect love would come and find us. You shouldn't settle for anything less than this romantic notion of being swept away. I held on to that sense of romance by becoming a photojournalist. For the last 15 years, I've been flying from place to place, looking for beauty, but never staying anywhere for long. That's how I came into this project, too. When I met Irene, I thought, if a professional matchmaker doesn't know the secrets of romance, nobody does. As a photojournalist, I've always managed to remain the outsider looking in, and that's how I approach making this documentary about Irene and her matchmaking service. Mark, how does it feel to be among so many Jews? Are you getting nervous? <laughs> Do you feel more Jewish, huh? Is it rubbing off? Right to three and the beginning. Stop. Are you boys married? Can I interest you in the matchmaking? What about you? You got you're married? Uh, unfortunately. Unfortunately, well, that's your problem. Are you married? Do you want to be married? Do you want to be a bride with white dress? Yeah. And carrying flowers and walk down. Okay. Sign her up. Four hundred dollars. Brains or money? In this world, making matches, how difficult it is, you know. I mean, you have to go to lousy bars and what. Now, they're doing it the old-fashioned, nice way. Excuse me? Excuse me? Excuse me, did you take a brochure like this? Yes, yes. you took one. Yes, because I am after you. Are you married? No. You want to be? Uh, sure. You like that face? Sure. We have better, but I mean, this is all the stock I have with me right now. <laughs> you like nurses? I like nurses. Okay. If you marry Mark, you're going to be like a daughter to me, because he's like a son to me. Are and you related? No. Oh. No. He's, um, he's half Jewish, the bottom half. <laughs> if Mark doesn't work out, I have someone else for you. But we'll give Mark a shot first. I want to get you married. So what are you selling? What are we selling? No, we're not selling anything. Are you organized already or you're not? Yeah, we're, we're, we've been around for a year. I need 20-year-old girls. I got dentists and doctors and medical students. How about we do a little exchange, barter? How you like that? What, what are you going to do for us? What do you want? I'll give you some young ones that I can't do anything for. But my friend here, he's looking for a tall, thin Jewish girl. Got it. Very wealthy. Got it. Got that it. Cooks and cleans. Good. And what else? How about smoking? Smoking or not smoking doesn't matter. Does he want to give me four hundred dollars for a year? If you got the girl. Are you married? No, no, I'm not. You're not married? I saw that before. You have matching things. Yeah. It's hard to match somebody up if it's not like you know you don't have the personality. I don't think that's it's hard at all. <laughs> uh, Noah was in the army for two years, right. and she's been here in America for eighteen years. I'd like you to come in. See what yeah, I I'll come in. Sure, you. I'd love to. Yeah. Good. Definitely. Um, but I mean, I'm very. Would you marry a guy? I wouldn't want to. No. There you go. You're out of it. What? Out of it. Out of it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> wow. I want her. Yeah. 
first you convert and then we'll talk. Irene, come on. No, 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 no. No, I can't, uh, I can't, I can't play with this girl. This girl is an Israeli. Do you understand? Israeli? She was a soldier. She'll give you a, a kung fu, uh, you know, you'll remember it. <laughs> Irene still keeps Noah's number under lock and key. And Jennifer, I managed to get one date with her, but I haven't heard from her since. I guess she doesn't go for my type. Well, enough about my love life. So Irene, yeah? could you uh, recommend someone that I could go to interview who's on your service, uh, one of your clients? Yeah, do you want a man or a woman? A <clears throat> uh, woman. Uh-huh. Do you want her to be pretty, Mark? Wouldn't hurt. <laughs> you work well with pretty ladies, I think, don't you? <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. I have these in the order of pretty. Here's somebody nice. Her name is Nancy. Is that pretty, Mark? I was feeling that you were just looking at this as you know, your work and you weren't being very sympathetic. And I, I remember saying to you, Mark, you know, for you, this is just a project. But for me, this is my life. And um, I, I think you sort of got the message that you're dealing with people who this is a very touchy subject with. Why do you think you're not married? <laughs> well, thank you for asking that question. Um, you know, I'm 35 and never really had any of these big dreams of getting married and these big dreams of weddings and yeah. bridesmaids and um, you know this fairy tale life you know if i want to have kids and don't want to be in a wheelchair going to their you know grade school graduation it has to be i guess sooner than later so what do you think do you, you want to have kids are you promising me? huh what? Are you asking me, like, right now? Yeah. Well, or, well... Do I want to have kids? Uh, yeah. Real life, I'm asking you. In real life? I'm just asking you, like, as if we're just sitting here... Oh. ...chatting. Oh. Um, yeah. Eventually. Eventually. I've got to get you married. You're too nice to, uh, be floating around there. Having all this fun. <laughs> we gotta clip your wings. <sighs> Do you think I'm ready? If you're not ready now, you ain't never gonna be there. Um, are you lonely? Sometimes. Then you're ready. If you're lonely, you're ready. And I was resistant to the whole idea of a dating service, very resistant to it. But on the other hand, I thought, I don't have time. <laughs> it's, it's like a time saver. OK, this is very heavy. But it was also, in a way, like I was giving up control. It was nice somebody else is taking care of, my, of this part of my life for me. I called Irene, and um, I decided I wanted to ha her to help me prioritize which guy would be better to call first, and then second, and third, so on. Okay. I mean, for example, with, with uh, Jerry, the one who did call me, I, I didn't really feel like there was a particularly good fit there. Uh -huh. So can you tell me what It was, was a very about? frustrating conversation. I was actually, after I got the phone with her, I said to myself, I can't do this. Even if you didn't like a guy, I think you should go out with him at least three times. Because, I mean, before you completely reject them. You know, if she was 20 years old, she would say, wow, eight nice guys. I can't wait to meet them. And, you know, onward and upward. And instead, she's cautious. And, and this one uh, just didn't set right with her. And, uh, you know, when, when she's out there without a service to support her, she would never meet eight guys. It would take her uh, two years to meet eight appropriate men like that, if ever. All right, now I'm going to take pictures of you kayaking. So now you have to give me the camera, okay? I was always attracted to guys who weren't Jewish. So a lot of it was the tall blondes. Put me right in the center here. Just no. <gasps> Whoa, Mark. Well, when I met with Irene, um, 
And I said, you know, oh, by the way, I've got a list of qualities that I'd like to look for in somebody. And I think this one was sense of humor. That is actually a very important thing because I'm a serious person. Okay. All right, you're kayaking. I love to laugh and goof around, but I need other people to kind of provoke that in me. Excellent. No, I thought cute body. I thought cute and good body would be on your list. Why do you think that's on my list? I think that because you're from LA. I think that that's some a curse I've had. <laughs> I want someone who's really bright, like brighter than much brighter than me, <laughs> and someone who's. Why do you think you're not very bright? Uh, I think I'm bright about some things and really stupid about others. I mean, I feel like really inadequate about like screwing things in. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, kind of mechanics. mechanics. And you think that you're going to find women who are much better at tools? Take your camera down. So, Mark, I hear you're sampling my merchandise. I would like to know what you are doing with my clients without my permission. What was there about Nancy that uh, got you to go out? You know, I... Um uh, I went and did a little interview with her, and then she invited me out to watch these fireworks on... Uh, Where did those fireworks take place? In her bedroom? Or... <laughs> on Navy Pier. Oh, oh gosh. In front of everyone? <laughs> Maybe now you'll be a little more relaxed. <laughs> Somehow, I don't think she was really that surprised to learn that I was seeing Nancy socially. In fact... I'm wondering if her whole plan wasn't to match me and Nancy from the beginning. If that's true, Irene's pretty sneaky. I'll have to be more careful. She could really complicate things for me. I have a conflict between meeting somebody in a very romantic sense of, um, you know, the, the whole sleepless in Seattle thing where you meet somebody and, you know, it's all fate to happen versus the idea of, a much slower um, pace where you're, you may not feel any kind of connection, but you're getting to know each other. I have a number of girlfriends who have actually married guys with whom they didn't feel like there was a lot of passion. And they're jealous of, of myself and other friends who might be going out with guys where there's the passion and the excitement. And, you know, and in the end, we look at them and say, yeah, but they're married and they have kids and they have nice husbands and nice relationships and their husbands are nice to them, not like the kind of jerky guys that you have these kind of passionate relationships with. Um, she's a really nice person, but she's just yeah. not my ideal goddess. So what is your ideal goddess? Let's talk about that. What would you want her to be that she isn't? Hmm? Taller, more self-assured, um, Funnier. Really? Um, are you serious when you're when you're asking questions about her, or is this you know part of the documentary game? Hmm? This is real life. Real life? Yeah. So if all things were equal, you would marry her? I mean, taller, thinner. Oh, these are things we could do. You know, higher heels, Jenny Craig. Okay, what else? I think you might be right when you said it. it's it's just something I attribute to the looks, but there's something else missing that I, I want, but I can I just can't articulate. Mm -hmm. To be perfectly honest, looks are a big deal to me. I don't know how to get around it. I'm always amazed when women claim to be mystified by this behavior in men. Even my mother. Let me show you an interview I did with her a year ago after I ended a two-year relationship with my former girlfriend. No, that wasn't the reason. But oh. part, part of the reason was that um, she didn't fit my ideal uh, goddess. She didn't have blonde hair. She didn't have... You, you really mean that you... Oh, Mark, I can't believe this. Jeez. You, I mean, do you judge women just by how they look? Do you think there wasn't chemistry because she wasn't beautiful enough? Possibly. Oh. Son, you're in, hmm, you're in trouble. <laughs> What's your relationship with your mother? Because sometimes, you know, it's, it's a rubber band. You know what a rubber band is? You can stretch it out. And when you let go of one end, it goes right back to the beginning. And that's where I think, you know, 
most of our problems start as our relationship with our parents. Um, if you have a problem relating to a woman on a serious basis, uh, you've got to examine where it's coming from and whether you're making it happen or it just comes apart. What do you think, Mark? You didn't answer my question. Did your mother reject you? My father rejected my mother, and my mother thinks that all men are beasts, and I, I don't want to be one of those guys who, you know, leads someone on and, and then rejects them, and then I don't want to be a beast. You have adopted your mother's theory. It was true for your mother, but it's not true for you. You have to uh, develop your own theory. You really haven't. You've just used your mother's uh, problem, made it your own, and are now applying it to every facet of your life. So you're really not authentic. I don't think men are beasts. That doesn't all the party you think they are? No, I don't. I think men are vulnerable human beings like women are. I guess I see myself as someone who's more of a, and this sounds almost very shallow, I know, which I'm afraid to tell you about, but more, um, more of kind of like a, a catch. <laughs> I don't want you to be a butterfly and, uh, you know, go kiss all the flowers. I want you to have a goal in mind. If you have a list, I'd like to know it. And uh, let's work on the list and get you people that you don't reject before you even start. You know, it's not fair to the girl. I think you should let her know that you don't see this as a long term. What do you want to do? Well, we could go down to the beach and have a picnic down to the beach, or we could go to a restaurant. Why don't we walk on the beach and then go to a restaurant? Okay. Yeah, Sounds great. Okay. So, what do I need? So we have to go over to the sand. Do we want real sand? Yeah. Why? Because we could take our shoes off and go and get, let the sand squish through our toes. <laughs> Aren't you gonna, you're not gonna help me down? Oh. 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 Yeah. So, what I think is happening is you're on automatic pilot when you go out with a girl. Before it even starts. You know exactly what every move is going to be, and you know that you're not going to lead her on, and you know just when you're going to dump her. The dumpy, unfortunately, never knows, but you do. Okay. So what are you saying, basically? Are you saying that I should just, like, that, you're, that you are a bad bet for me? What? Like, you think, what do you think? You, you know, I'm, like, sizing you up, and then a week from now, I'm going to ask you to marry me? Is that what you're afraid it's of? It's a typ typical pattern of mine when I meet somebody, yeah. They ask you to marry him? No, just that I, I feel like I'm being, you know, this is like... And I, this is nothing, it has very little to do with you. I'm just telling you that, that I feel like I'm being, yeah. So I, this is like, yeah. I don't know. So should I just act, should I just be a bitch then? And just like not be... Not be, just... Why not? Just don't be interested in me. What worries me is that this has been so successful in the past where you get a few kicks and then you're out of it and you're clean and you make a clean getaway. Actually, what's happened in the past is, you know, I haven't let on right away that I, I didn't think it was going to work out, but I kept thinking, like, give them a chance, like you always say. Yeah, but you never really thought you'd, they had a chance, right? Right. Interviewing Nancy was a mistake. I didn't realize how emotionally involved I could become with these people. So I called Irene and asked her if she'd put me in touch with a male client of hers. She came up with a guy named Mark Blumenthal. At least I won't become romantically involved with him. I think a lot of people run through life. And I think there's some people who manage life. Are you running right. to or from? Not running. Let's not put running. I'm managing my right. life. Well, I mean, I enjoy filling up my, my time I with a lot of wouldn't. different things. You know, Mark? Why? I wish you would be home and be lonely and say to yourself, gee, 
I built this nice house and I'm lonely. I wish there was a woman here with me. I think there are people who are very busy in their life, who are so involved with their jobs and don't know how to meet anybody. And the business I'm in, the, the women who come in are only in there for uh, approximately a minute, minute and a half. And uh, the type of impression I make on them uh, has to be very quick. Three plane, four egg. And I try to uh, be as funny as I can usually and hope that I can possibly ask them out for a cup of coffee. Anything, You're anything else you like? It's really lovely. Yeah, I have like two more papers to do. I uh -huh. find that the kind of women who I get along with are women who are usually oh. under 30, usually a little more outgoing, more vivacious, a little less set in their ways. So give her a call because she wants you to really babysit for her. Would I marry a woman like that? I don't know, but I like dating a woman like that. This is my girl. You think so, my huh? My baby. You think so, my huh? My baby. I think at this time, um, I'm getting a little more ready to get married than I was maybe a year ago. So yes, I'm formulating to, to, to get the idea to get married. You are just beginning to get ready to yeah, formulate right, the, the question, question to, to, get to, to yes, see. Yes, I mean, yes. I need a readiness factor. There, I, there I need a, you there on the... There is a low readiness factor here. It's going to take a lot of effort on my part to really uh, go out there and date and really find the type of woman who I really want to be with. This is a great girl for you because she's upbeat and she's got a lot of energy and she's very hyper uh -huh. and I think uh, you'll have a problem keeping up with her. Well, what kind of chemistry do you feel well, about, you. about me at this point? This is how my life has been. You know, you go to a party and there's someone over there. I want to know that person. Boom. And then you, you know them and of course they're a disaster. <laughs> So I, I, I never what you thought they were going to be. They're always a drug addict or an alcoholic. Oh, okay. You're okay. Right. She just seemed like a real dynamo. She's a possibility as far as another date. I would like to see what she's all about. Well, actually, I have a couple things that are kind of up in the air. Saturday morning, we're going to get Aerosmith tickets. You want to see Aerosmith? Uh huh. I was going to get some. Oh, really? I'm sorry, I just don't see him going to see Aerosmith, you know? But, but he's like, he's so connected. I mean, he knows someone to get tickets from, but I want to date his son. When I first saw Mark, I thought he just seemed like such a dad. I know it's so sweet of you to get me two oh, huge cakes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Which is not very sexy. All right, how do you like this girl? Yeah, she's a bright girl. But what did you use to I was a stockbroker. <laughs> but it was, it's, it's an interesting aspect. Well, how did you go from being a stockbroker to... Well, that's, that's a long story. Working with bagels. That's a long story. <laughs> Through a friend. But I've taken pottery too, just to let you know. I've done stained glass and I've done pottery. She liked talking a lot about herself, which is good. How did she react to you? Um, she, I think she was warm, um, favorable, I think. Well, he had hair, hair, but not much. Okay. No, I full head. How old is he? Well, <laughs> he was billed. At 36? Uh -oh. What do you mean, billed? Well, they, I was told he was 36. Mm hmm. And I think he's. 46. <laughs> Crowds could be about uh, 50,000 today. We're here a little bit early, though. Looking for one of those big parties. I think the women outnumber the men here about three to one. That's all I can tell you. I don't hear him talking marriage talk. I hear him talking girl talk. He's interested in girls. Don't look at faces and figures and legs. Those things change. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're limiting yourself. I know the age thing you say isn't an issue, but I know you don't like older women. Don't limit yourself to that okay. 21 to 30 crowd. You really shouldn't. Okay. I really believe that. Okay. Don't patronize me. <laughs> what I want you to say to yourself is, I want to get married. Mm -hmm. I want to spend my life with a companion mm -hmm. and not look for substitutes. Mm -hmm. I want to build a life with someone mm -hmm. and know that when I get old and I can't go biking and I can't go horseback riding and I can't <laughs> go hiking, you know, we'll yeah. sit quietly and we'll talk to each other. But see, you filled your life in with a, a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. What you're really doing is withdrawing mm -hmm. to your own little private world mm -hmm. and shutting out whatever you don't really want to, mm -hmm. to bother you. I'm worried about Mark. He's going to wake up an old man, lonely old man, and he'll have cer ceramic classes and 
stained glass classes and uh, outings in the park and uh, uh, camping and uh, cruises. To what end? To what end? I think Irene might be right. A lot of guys get to a certain age and think they want to be married, but they really don't. I'm on my way to Los Angeles for a small birthday party for my mother. That'll get me out of town for a while and away from this project. I think the distance will do me good. So, you know, I was in Los Angeles for the last week. So tell me what's wrong. What, what, what's, what happened? I met a woman I kind of like. Oh. So, what's her name? Sherry. Sherry. Not bad. I brought her picture. Let me see. Yeah, she looks young. She's really young at heart. She's yeah. great. But then you do go for older women. <laughs> How old is she? 43. And you are? 35? 39. Ah, oh, well, I gotta think about that. I'd love to meet her. Do you think she'll come to Chicago for my interview? <laughs> September 2nd. Oh, what for? For the weekend, to see me. To see you? Goody, goody, goody. I love it. I love it. I love it. I've got to be very careful who I give my approval to. I don't know that it'll do any good, whether I approve or not, but, um, but I'm going to be careful with my approval. That's it. Do you always stand this close? Like, will you be like one foot from my mouth? No. Is that the way this is? It's just that this is very close quarters. Acting nuts. That's OK. Mm. Is this like meeting my mother? Um, worse. This. And then this. And what are those? Shiskies and kosher butter. Whatever you do, don't go without the kosher butter. So how come you brought it for me? Uh, you weren't trying to get on the good side of me. This has nothing to do Absolutely with not. coloring my opinion of you, you right? I don't know what it really was. Well, I'll tell you tell what, me what it really was. I was so nervous about meeting you that I was starting to get resentful. Like, ah. I just felt like she's going to be judging me and evaluating yeah, me. And right. I like Likes it. a little skinny mark. Yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so I decided that if I switched the gears into just getting the fact that what he was telling me was you were special. I was I not special. Thank you. I I'm really relax. not special. It's just so. that he likes my cooking. That's where it's at. <laughs> That's where it's at. <laughs> Let's get something real straight, okay? Mm -hmm. Right off the bat. Okay. My new goal in life is to get him married. <laughs> See, everything else is secondary. So you pass. Right now. Okay, pass. Uh -huh. Finished. Okay. I want you to know I'm using my Shabbos dishes for you, which you is are. which is a, a sign of something or other. I'm not quite sure what, but <laughs> you could define it any way you want. Now, just remember, do not put this on this plate, okay? Do not use this fork for this, because these are all meat things. Oh wow! And this is milk. Do you get it? Yeah, I, I get it totally. So it's eat it with your fingers and don't put it on a plate. She catches on very fast. Put that down. Mark, sit down, please. <laughs> this is so funny. This is really like a mother and son thing here. Is it? I'm watching. No, mm -hmm. no, actually we're lovers. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're very welcome. It was a pleasure. Same here. So what, what, did, what did you really think of her? I didn't like her. I didn't like anything about her. I'm not talking now about um, about you, I'm talking about me. Um, some of the things that she said were, um, what? $600. Mark, a face is a mask. 
And if you marry the most beautiful girl in the world and she turns out to be a bitch and a nag and gives you an ulcer, she is going to look like the ugliest thing that was ever dug up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is this great? Oh, this is great. <laughs> I always wanted to be blonde. I always wanted to be a blonde, and I always wanted to have hair so that when I run toward my lover, the hair jumps up and down. I think men put too much emphasis on sex, and uh, I think anything that takes 10 minutes can't be that important. <laughs> but I, you know, I'm not a man, so what can I tell you? I would love to see you get married to someone who is on your plane. You have never been married. You've really never been in love. Somebody full of dreams and full of expectations for a long, good life together. No bad history and, and no ex-husbands. I mean, Sherry is, she's, she's been around the block a couple of times. But, uh, you know, if you want Sherry, that's fine. I'm all for her. I'm not going to suffer if you marry her. <laughs> uh, I'll go on to bigger and better things. I'm glad it came apart without me, because I don't want to carry the responsibility and feel guilty for the rest of my life, you know. But I really am relieved. Do you feel like you lost your best friend? Do you feel empty? Do you feel forsaken? Are you ready for a new love, or you have to mourn this one for a little while? What's happening? I'm ready for new. Good. I'm ready to move on. Are you ready for marriage? I yes, wouldn't be do. ready with the right person. Well, I'm some ready, people are on the launching pen. Mark I'm... here is on the launching pen. Terry was an obvious mismatch for Mark Blumenthal. I could have told anybody that, but I find her interesting. Actually, she might make a good addition to this project. She's cute young, energetic, and she makes me laugh. This is my office and I have a west view. Uh-huh. We're on the 83rd floor. Terry is a paralegal in a law firm in downtown Chicago. Everything in her wardrobe is black, and her favorite actress is Audrey Hepburn. I have to admit that I find her personality kind of appealing. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised when I kissed you? Yes, I was. My heart was pounding. I was like afraid you'd hear it on the microphone. <laughs> Let's just say this. I clicked much better with you than I did with Mark. What's his face? <laughs> How's that? I think there was like a, just a click. I did not click with that other person. I clicked with you. But I did not know if you thought you clicked with me. Because one never knows what the other person's thinking. But then I kind of think if one person is clicking, chances are the other one is. How can you have, like, a one-sided click? Well, but I want to know now. <laughs> you opened the door. That's yeah, a legal yeah. term. <laughs> Someone opens the door, you're free to ask them that yeah, line of question. Ask me. Um, so do you think, do you see your, <laughs> could you see yourself sleeping with me? <laughs> yeah. OK, so what do you think Irene would think about that? I don't know. What do you think she thinks? I don't, I don't know. I can't, I, I don't know. Do you worry about that? Well, not really. <laughs> it would not stop me. Let's put it that way. Are you serious about her? What, what do you mean? You want to marry her. That's what I mean. I just gone out with her for two weeks. I mean. Yeah, but so why why this uh, why this uh, investigation here? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, you only call me in for the uh, for the important stuff. You know, <laughs> for the for the serious stuff. What is this? What is inter this interrogation here? If it's just a two week date. What do you think about all this filming stuff? Do you find it to be erotic or kind of a turn on? Uh, I'm a really I'm a major voyeur in life. No kidding. I mean, it's not a turn on like in on the date part. It's more of a turn on like when we're talking. <laughs> I think that has something to do with us. Um. I need to get over here <laughs> to get to the pasta. I think food can be very sensual. And I think cooking is really enjoyable. And I like to have a glass of wine, turn on music, make a meal. 
Are you serious, Mark? Come on, you can't be serious. Are you? What's so shocking to you about it? That I was not aware of it, that, that it all happened, uh, you know, right under my nose and I didn't smell it. How many times have you been in love? I'd say three to four. It's a lot. <clears throat> and I don't, really don't think that until I recently, the person I lived with, the adult, I think that was like more of a real adult kind of love, not that young kind of teenage puppy love kind of thing. That hot and bothered, I'm just discovering sex kind of love. <clears throat> I don't like Terry for you. I think that it's going to be like, um, you know how um, nutritionally when you when you eat a candy bar, you know what happens? Your energy level goes phew, and it peaks, and then it goes boom, and you're, then you're down lower than when you started before you had the candy bar. If this is what you want, and you can't see anything wrong with it, um, I'm certainly not going to be the one to blow the whistle. Part of the time I feel like I'm in those little snippets in the One Harry Met Sally movie. What were you asking me? If you believe in Valentine's Day. And why you didn't do anything for Valentine's Day. Because I was all alone. And then part of the time I feel like it's kind of one of those little scenes from Sex, Lies, and Videotape. Excellent. Let me, let me adjust. Maybe you're... <laughs> Maybe you're just doing this to meet women. What? Maybe you're doing this to meet women. Are you? Am I what? Doing it to meet women. Doing, doing the documentary? Am I? I started out just to make a documentary about a Jewish matchmaking service, but obviously it's turned into something else, and I don't know exactly what. I can't help thinking that Irene has something to do with it. Is it just that Terry is Jewish that bothers you, or is there something else going on? None of your business. <laughs> you feel like you might be giving me up, or what's, what's the deal? Do you feel disturbed that, that I found someone that you didn't you know, to choose? Uh, something strange has evolved between us, and I don't know how to put it. If you remember, I wrote you a poem. What did I write? You invaded my home, you invaded my privacy, and you invaded my heart. Do you remember that mm -hmm. one? Um, uh, when I wrote it, it was, you know, it was just fun. It's not as if I'm a lonely old lady and along comes a good-looking guy and I'm somehow, uh, you know, not, I'm not attracted, but I, I want to help him and I want to be part of whatever he's doing. But there was something very special. I can't really define it. It was as if you were on my service and as if I needed to find you someone. And at the same time, um, a very protective feeling. You are a very vulnerable person. Did you know that, Mark? You know, somebody could blow you over with a, with a breath. And I think that's why I intervened so strongly with Sherry. And I'm not about to put my head into that one again. <laughs> Am I disturbed that you would consider a girl who came to me for help in finding a Jewish man? Sure. If this is what you want, uh, I'm not going to interfere in your life. So uh, tell me, Mark, uh, when you get married, whoever she will be, are you and I going to be friends, or is she going to take my place? Mark? Mark? We'll always be friends. Um, just friends? Lovers no more? Well, Mark? Mark?